For this last example, we want to expand upon the ideas of classical and empirical probabilities to reach something called the law of large numbers. All right, so let's think about a coin, for example. When we have a fair two-sided coin, then we assume the classical probability of tossing heads would be one out of two, right? Because there are two sides, one of them is heads and one of them is not, which is 0.5 if we count it as a decimal. All right, so I actually have a stack crunch applet and I had it toss the coins for me. Um, so it, it will do this, it's in one of the applets if you're interested. And so I had it tossing it and it came up with one head out of five tosses. So this is one out of five which is 0 0.2 as a decimal. All right, that's the empirical probability because it's from data. That's the classical probability for A because I didn't grab a coin, I just thought about it in my head, right? So that gets to why are these results different? So a classical probability um, is derived from theory or it comes from logic and theory, right? You just kind of think about it. You don't do it, right? You don't do the experiment. You don't toss the coin. You just kind of imagine a coin in your head and use logic to figure out what the chances of a heads is out of two tosses or five tosses or whatever. But when I tossed the coin five times, I came up with an empirical probability. Empirical probability comes from historical data. As in, I tossed those in the past. Well, I should say, how about I just say observed data? Because you could do it right now. You could grab a coin and toss them. And so observed data. Oh, usually it's in the past, right? It's, well, it has to be in the past. It has to have happened, right? Okay, so if that's the case, then why are they not the same? That's what it's asking for C. Well, they're not the same because this is coming from observed data from real life. And real life is messy, <laughs> right? So they're not the same. Classical and empirical are not the same values because real life, which is where this one is, is messy and random. So a coin's just not going to do what you want it to do all the times, right? We know that the classical probability should be what the probability is, but real life data has a way of messing with that, right? And it's just, it's ugly, right? It's not going to be perfect. Classical probability is perfect, right? Because it's all in your head, so you don't have to test it against real life. And empirical probability is from real life. Okay, so then I have that same applet and I tell it, told it to do it more and more and more and so it just keeps flipping them and I got to 20 tosses you can see tosses 17 18 19 and 20 in here and you can tell up here that I tossed it a total of 20 times so 20 times nine of them were heads all right so my empirical probability now is right so the probability of heads is nine heads out of 20 all right, so let's go get a decimal for that so that we have a clue of what that is. All right, so that's 0.45. And it's not the same as what we found previously because, of course, real life is messy, right? When I did the first empirical probability, I got 0.2, but the second one, I got 0.45. All right, then I did it again, and I had it the applet, run it and run it and run it. Um, and let's see what happened now. I have 502 heads out of 1,020. So the probability of heads, probability of heads, right? 
so P stands for probability, the parentheses stands for the of, is 502 divided by 1020, which we can see is 0.4922. Oh, I didn't even look. It was right there that time, too. I didn't have to go to Desmos. I, I missed it that it was there. Oops. Okay, so this is 0.4922. Okay. So what's happening now? Right? What happens to these empirical probabilities as the number of trials increased? So let's think about this. We went from n was 2, or excuse me, excuse me it was 5, it was 5 to 20 to 1,020. And when we did that, the probability went from 0.2 to 0.45 to 0.4922. Right. That's how it was changing as n was growing. So this question is saying, hey, what's, what's happening? As our number of trials increases, what's happening to that empirical probability? What is this doing? And you can see it in the graph, right? Where is that approaching? It's getting closer and closer to this line here. And that line is 0.5 because that's the classical probability, right? So what's happening is that as the number of trials goes up, the empirical probability probability I got in there is closer and closer or gets closer and closer to the classical probability. In this case, it was 0.5. It, of course, won't be. Every, every problem has its own classical probability. And that's the law of large numbers. The law of large numbers says that if you take a probability experiment, like tossing a coin, and you repeat it over and over and over and over again, the proportion of times that a given event occurs with the empirical probability will approach the classical probability. All right, now, what does this mean for us in practical terms? Well, I live in a state, and most of my students live in a state, um, Michigan, that has legalized gambling. So we want to think about places where you can gamble, like casinos. So. If, if the classical probability is going to win out in the long run, what does that mean? Well, that means that if you get up, quote unquote, right? If you're, if you're on a hot streak, if you're ahead and you're winning, they want to keep you there because in the long run, you'll lose, right? In the long run, you'll go back down. So they want to keep you there as long as possible. So casinos want to keep gamblers in the casino So the classical probability has time to, or had, well, so their <laughs> classical probability g comes out. <laughs> classical prob oh, that's a probability. There's an L in there. Probability has, oh, let me say that, has time to play out. To, yeah, I'll just say that plan. What do I mean? I mean, when you're gambling, you're banking on probabilities. Empirical probabilities are the actual probabilities from the gaming table, right? So empirical probabilities are from the gaming table. Classical probabilities are where those empirical probabilities will approach. So empirical probability in a casino is the ta is the probabilities from the actual games that are being played. In the long run, the house will win. Right? So they have to keep you there so that the classical probability has time, so that the empirical probability will approach the classical probability.
so that even if you get on a winning streak, quote unquote, right, even if you're having a lucky hand, right, that's a real life probability. It happens, right? We saw on the previous page that you, mean, you can get one head out of five. It can happen. You can get a streak like that with tails, right? But it won't win out in the long run. That's the key. So the casinos want to keep you there so that way it ha you have time for your empirical probability being up to go away and become the classical probability where you will not be up. You will be losing to the house. So what do casinos do to make this happen, right? Um, so their methods. <laughs> well, the methods for a casino is there's no windows. Go, go into any casino. Right? They don't have a lot of windows. Um, they don't want you to see natural light. No natural light. Lots of neon and sounds. Um, there's uh, lots of neon. Let's just say that. Lots of neon. So, you, so you're disoriented. So that you don't know what time of day it is. There's no clocks anywhere. If you want to look up and know what time it is, <laughs> you have to bring your phone because you won't know otherwise. Um, they have cheap food. I can't tell you the number of people I've had that say, oh, it, we go to the casino because it's got a cheap, you know, steak buffet, that kind of thing. Um, often free or cheap drinks, alcoholic drinks. And of course, they give you alcohol, so you make poorer choices <laughs> in this world. Um, now, this is not to say that you can't have fun. Um, it's just that you have to um, know what you're doing. So they have a maze-like architecture. I've been, I've been lost in a couple casinos in Las Vegas because, ooh, architecture, um, because you can't figure out where the door is. <laughs> you're just like, what is going on? Right, where am I going? I don't know where the room is that I'm looking for, et cetera. Okay, so this is not to say that you can't enjoy a casino. Right? A lot of people enjoy a casino, but you have to be wise about it. Right? So if you're going to gamble, how do you gamble responsibly? Um, first of all, I would actually say it, it, gambling in a casino is a, a different experience than gambling by buying like a lottery ticket from the store. They both can be addictive for different reasons. Right? So gamble responsibly. Sorry. So if you are going to gamble, and in Michigan you can gamble at the age of 18 in a couple of the casinos. So you have to think about ways to do that sensibly. So you want to go with a plan, a schedule, right, and friends. What do I mean by that? Well, if you know, if you know you're going to go see a comedy show at 8 p.m., then you arrive by, you know, 5.30 p.m., you know you're going to have dinner first, then you're going to allow yourself to gamble for an hour, but no more, no less, and then you will stop and go see the show, right? You have a plan. You have people with you that can help you make wiser choices, right? Um, never take more than you can afford to lose, right? Gamble only with extra cash, right, after all your bills are paid. Um, walk away when you are up. I did this once. I've only gambled a couple times. Um, <laughs> I was waiting for a friend um, who was in the bathroom, and so I thought, I'll, I'll gamble on these nickel slots, and I, I won on my, you know, 10th pull or something, I won $20, I literally walked out of the casino, I said, that's it, I won my 20 bucks, I'm out of here, and so I just walked away and waited for my friend outside. Um, the other thing is, and I didn't put it in here, but let me write it over here, always keep um, a cash supply, like always keep your cards at home, or in your car, right? Cards and $20 cash in your car. Um, I've heard horror stories from a state trooper in um, the Detroit area who has found several people on the side of the road on the way home because they didn't have the money for gas because they gambled it all. So you want to keep $20 cash on you. So that way you can make it home if you need to. And just on a side note, um, 
there is no such thing as the law of averages. So staying at the craps table or the slot machine forever because it's due, quote unquote, right? And it's the, the, the machine has no memory. That's not how it works. It's not going to, it's not going to pay out for you because you've been there a long time. That's just not how it happens. So staying there longer and getting deeper and deeper and deeper into debt does not help. That's not a good thing. Walk away when you're up and walk away when you've lost the cash you brought in and you're done. That's it. You had your enjoyment. You had your fun. Don't use the ATMs machine, right? Do not use your credit cards nor your ATM machine to gamble. That's a bad... They have an ATM machine in there. Don't use it. I've heard that they charge rates on it too, <laughs> right? If you get down the amount that you were willing to lose, then walk away. 